information we have released and the Ryzen 9 7000 series specifications. Here they are. So we have the 7950X, the 7900X, the 7700X, and the 7600X specs leaked with up to 16 Zen 4 cores, a 5.7 gigahertz boost, which is absolutely insane. Simply insane. Let me correct my terminology there to stay accurate to the WCCF tech writers. And 170 watt TDP, which is actually quite incredible if we compare that to the new 13,000 series from Intel, which is using quite a bit more power. The specifications of AMD's upcoming Ryzen 7000 Raphael desktop CPUs based on the Zen 4 core are finally revealed to us by our sources and we can confirm that they are indeed going to be uh, or there are indeed going to be four SKUs at launch. The 7950X, the 7900X, the 7700X, and the 7600X. The AMD Ryzen 7000 desktop CPU lineup, codenamed Raphael, will be launching on the 15th of September, following an announcement later this month, as confirmed in our exclusive leak from the previous day. Now we have managed to get a hold of the final specifications for the 7000 desktop CPU family, which, as expected, are going to feature four SKUs based on the Zen 4 core architecture. Once again, those SKUs include the above mentioned. So before we get into the core specifications, we have to point out that the AMD Zen 4 architecture brings with it an 8-10% to IPC uplift, but the majority of the performance benefit comes for the higher clock speeds and a higher TDP. That is supplemented to each chip versus the prior generation AMD as highlighted a greater than 15% single threaded and a greater than 35% multi threaded and a greater than 25% performance per watt increase when comparing Zen 4 to Zen 3 cores. The CPUs will come with an optimized cache restructuring featuring double the L2 cache. Uh, that's going to be one megabyte versus 512 kilobytes. A shared L3 cache like the previous generation support for DDR5 memory with Expo and PCIe Gen 5 graphics cards and the M.2 SSD support. So with all of that said, let's get on with the specifications. Starting with the flagship of them all, we have the 7950X, which retains its healthy 16 core and 32 thread count from the previous two generations. The CPU will feature an impressive base frequency of 4.5 GHz and a boost clock of up to 5.7 GHz, which should make it 200 MHz faster than Intel's Alder Lake i9-12900KS, which has a boost frequency of 5.5 GHz on a single core. Of course, the 13900K we saw boosting plenty above that with the potential to overclock to above 6 GHz. Now, these could definitely have the potential of overclocking above 6 GHz. That being said, AMD is usually pretty good at keeping their boost clock pretty darn close to uh, what the maximum limit is for their overclocks. It looks like AMD is extracting every ounce of hertz that it could within that 175 or 170 watt TDP for the Ryzen 9 chips. As for the cache, the CPU comes with 80 megabytes of that which includes 60 mega, 64 megabytes of L cache from L3, sorry, there we go, and 16 megabytes from the L2 cache, one megabyte per core. Now, obviously, this is where, from the mining perspective, you get interested, right? That huge amount of cache. Technically, getting closer, though, Intel is getting closer. They're into the 50, somewhere around, I believe it was 54 megabytes of cache. Was that correct? Somewhere around there. I'll have to go double check. So they are catching up on the Intel side. That being said, you know... From the mining perspective, the AMD CPUs are kind of still killing it. It sounds like they're going to stay ahead of the game here to me. Let me know what you guys think. We don't know the pricing or performance of the 7950X yet, but based on the clocks alone, it should be a worthy successor to the 5950X and will easily be able to topple Intel's current i9-12900K CPU. Next up, we have another AMD Ryzen 9 chip, the 7900X, which has, as the name suggests, 
would come equipped with 12 cores and 24 threads. The CPU comes with an even higher base clock of 4.7 GHz and a boost clock adjusted at 5.6 GHz across a single core. The CPU retains its 170 watt TDP and gets 76 megabytes of cache, 64 megabytes of L3 plus 12 megabytes of L2. The CPU will be positioned in the same ballpark as the 5900X, but with the performance that would shake the ground from uh, below the Core i7 12700K. Moving over to the Ryzen 7 family, here we have the 7700X, an 8 core and 16 thread part. AMD positions this as the sweet spot for gamers and such. The CPU will feature a base clock of 4.5 GHz and a boost clock of 5.4 GHz. Now, in my humble opinion, that wouldn't be the sweet spot for gamers because gamers, you look, I get it. A lot of games are moving over to multi-threaded performance. I understand that. I still have a ton of games in my library that I would love to run at 240 frames per second with that are going to be single threaded heavy. And the thing is, is with the higher boost clocks, you're going to typically get better single threaded performance, obviously because of the higher boost clock. And so I don't know that necessarily this is the sweet spot for gaming. I'm a little disappointed actually. I would have liked to see 5.7 gigahertz on the 7 series for the 7700X personally. That being said, the CPU will come with 40 megabytes of cache, which consists of 32 megabytes of L3 from a singular CCD and 8 megabytes of L2 for the Zen cores. I think that is going to be a little bit of a boost over the 5700X. We'll see in just a second um, from the mining perspective, that is. Now, one interesting thing to mention is that there is so far no update by AMD on, the, uh, on a 7800X chip. And I mean, to be honest, the, sev the 8 series in AMD has always kind of been, I mean, even from the get-go, the 1700X ended up kind of being a better buy than the 1800X. The 2700X in general ended up being a better buy than the, you know, the 2800X. So this is, I think it's not necessarily a bad idea to just phase that out unless they're going to add a step in there. For example, you have the 7700X at 4.5 gigahertz base clock and the 5.4 gigahertz boost clock. Maybe you get an eight core 16 thread part with the 7800X that has a 5.7 gigahertz boost clock. And then it starts to make sense. Um, but in the past, they really haven't made sense because most people were just taking the 700 and overclocking it to the 800 performance basically, and not purchasing or spending the extra money on the 800 SKU. It is likely that AMD wants to replace that part with the successor to the Ryzen 7 5800X3D with Zen 4 cores. That would be interesting with the 3D V cache, of course. We did test that. And there wasn't a huge performance uplift from it in mining that we initially expected from the cache. If that was the case, we can expect an update later this year to the CPU lineup since the Vcache parts have been confirmed for late Q4 of 2022 launch by AMD themselves. Also based on the segmentation alone, it looks like the Ryzen 7 7700X will be priced really well in the mainstream segment. Last up, we have the most budget tier, if you can call it that, but the pricing won't be reflective of that. Dang it. The Ryzen 5 7600X. This will be a 6 core and 12 thread part that features a high 4.7 GHz base clock and a 5.3 GHz single core boost frequency. The CPU will also run at a 105 watt TDP, which is much higher than its 65 watt predecessor. Though once again, it's that's the sacrifice you pay to achieve the faster clock speeds. The CPU will carry 38 megabytes of cache. That'll be 32 megabytes of L3 cache and six megabytes of L2 cache. So you have all of the specifications laid out here with the top end having 80 megabytes of cache, really specifically for mining. You're worried about that 64 megabytes of L3 cache, which, you know, Obviously, it's going to be double of the 32 megabytes of ca uh, L3 cache. So we should get a performance uplift in some mining there over those. 
We have one more crucial piece of information that we're able to learn. According to the same sources, the Ryzen 7000 desktop CPUs based on the Zen 4 core architecture may only allow users to undervolt the chip itself. This would be similar to the Ryzen 7 5800X3D, which also has a voltage limit that wasn't meant to be exceeded. It looks like AMD may have already be or may already be running the CPUs at high enough voltage to achieve higher clock speeds that there might be little to no room left for further overclocking. And that's what I was saying at the beginning of the article. We've heard about the 5.85 gigahertz frequency limit before, and that leaves the top parts with just 150 megahertz to work with. With that said, we have seen AMD mention extreme and enthusiast overclocking for their X670E and X670 class motherboards. That might be in relation to the DDR5 memory, but that remains to be seen. I personally believe that the overclocking such as PBO will be available, but limited to some extent on the first AM5 generation. That's all the information we got for you today as far as WCCF tech goes on that. Just a couple notes. Like I said, I was feeling like AMD is getting very close to the maximum amount of overclocks, essentially, or basically hertz that they're able to get to on these CPUs. And there may be no overclocking available for them, which would put them in an interesting position in the enthusiast market because Intel will still have that overclock ability. And while it really doesn't matter at the end of the day, if we're talking about the performance of your PC, if you have a part that you can buy that's going to operate at the, basically the top spec that it possibly can, and you get that across the board, then, you know, at the end of the day for the end user, that's probably the best case scenario. You're also going to have a lot less complaints, broken parts and so on and a consistent like chip manufacturing process across the board sounds much better. That being said, we can't ignore that enthusiast group of people that are gonna go out there and do, you know, overclocking competitions, etc., which is just gonna be more fun to do on Intel. And if you have that kind of going from that perspective, there is that weird kind of PR, boost that Intel gets out of just being a part of all of the overclocking competitions. You know, they already do pretty much sponsor most of the hardware bought um, competitions and so on, stuff like that. So it wouldn't be surprising if that, that kind of influences people to go that route in the enthusiast market just for fun. It's kind of interesting though. As far as like the daily user though, this is kind of what you want to see. It's, it's, it's kind of an interesting observation is all I'm saying at the end of the day. Thanks for checking out this clip from the Crypto Mining Show. You can check out the full episode here or more crypto content down here. Also, I'd like you to check out my locals page at sonofatech.locals.com where you can become a member for free or choose to be a $5 a month supporter that unlocks additional content.